friends during age hardening how does these breast plates grow whether the smaller ones grow or the bigger ones grow why does this happen and from where the driving force is coming from the free energy of a smaller precipitate is greater than that of free energy of the bigger precipitate because of the curvature effect the free energy of surface to the volume of a smaller particle is greater than that of the free energy of the bigger particle we draw free energy versus composition diagrams this curve is for free energy of alpha and this is for free energy of theta precipitate so friends the common tangent between these two gives the equilibrium compositions this point gives us the composition of alpha in equilibrium with theta so this is we can write composition of alpha in equilibrium with theta and this point gives us composition of theta in equilibrium with alpha so friends consider this is for theta big particle since we know the smaller precipitate is having more free energy than that of bigger precipitate so for the smaller precipitate we get a curve this is for theta smaller so friends if you draw the common tangent between these two alpha free energy doesn't change because alpha is a matrix the size effect only comes into picture for the precipitates so friends this is another point where alpha is in equilibrium with theta smaller which means smaller precipitate so earlier one is for bigger precipitate and now this composition is for composition of alpha in equilibrium with theta for smaller precipitate so friends here we can clearly see everything is in the matrix but the concentration of the composition of alpha which is in equilibrium with theta smaller is greater than that of theta which is in equilibrium with alpha friends this is alpha this is theta this is theta and this is matrix is alpha so from this diagram we can say that the composition of smaller theta which is in equilibrium with alpha so if we draw the concentration profile <coughs> this peak is because this precipitate is having 55 percent of copper whereas the matrix is of 4 percent is 4.5 percent is copper so the composition of theta in equilibrium with alpha at the interface is this precipitate is of same composition so even if it is smaller or bigger the composition is always 55 percent of copper since this point represents composition of bigger precipitate which is in equilibrium with alpha so friends from this we already noted that this point is composition of alpha in equilibrium with theta smaller and this point composition of alpha in equilibrium with theta bigger so friends this is our delta c so we can see that there is a concentration difference because of this concentration different we get the concentration gradient from friends because of this we get a diffusion flux minus d into dc by dx so friends now we can clearly see that there is a driving force from smaller precipitate to the bigger precipitate so what happens friends the copper atoms from this precipitate travel and so this precipitate grows like this and this precipitate is being consumed so what with the, with time what happens the smaller precipitate size gradually decreases so with decreasing the size of the precipitate it fits free energy goes up so if we can see if we draw that common tangent again so the equilibrium concentration goes like this so which means the composition of smaller theta which is in equilibrium with alpha is gradually increasing with decreasing in its size if we consider the same for the bigger particle its free energy comes down because of its size so if you try drawing a common tangent it gets like this so its equilibrium composition with alpha is coming down and for the smaller particle which is going up so friends we can see that delta t or delta c is gradually increasing with the process which means the smaller the precipitate becomes the faster it dissolves the composition of alpha in equilibrium with smaller precipitates is greater than that of the bigger precipitates which creates the concentration gradient which helps in the dissolution of smaller particles so at the expense of these smaller particles the bigger particles grow friends let's see what happens if all the particles are of the same size if all part all precipitates are of same size every precipitate is having the same free energy curve so the equilibrium composition of alpha in equilibrium with theta is same for all the precipitates which means delta c is zero so there is no driving force from one precipitate to the other precipitate so if all the precipitates are of the same size then there is no oxford ripening order and there is no precipitate coarsening for the precipitate coarsening to occur all the precipitates should be of different sizes and how do we get all these precipitates of same size or the different size if we have homogeneous nucleation then we get all the precipitates are of same size if it is heterogeneous then we get particles of different sizes which helps in precipitate coarsening oxford ripening coarsening is given by this formula r2 cube minus r1 cube is equals to kt t is the time to grow from r1 to r2 friends don't get confused with the formula we have for 
grain growth. Grain growth is also having a similar formula, d to the power of n minus d n power n is equals to kt. Here n is always greater than 1. So in the question, if you are given n is less than 1, then we take 1 by n in the formula. So friends, I hope you understood the concept. Please answer these two questions to yourself. Thank you so much for watching. Have a nice day.